Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ahmed Hussein. I'm a person who loves to talk about research so much so I decided to make YouTube videos just about that. And today is part three of our four part series about my DNA fit testing. Now, if you know what DNA fit is, you can see over here, this company that I designed to show you kind of your optimized nutrition, fitness plan, sleep cycle, stress resilience, all through a form of DNA testing. So all I did was I received a pack got a bit of a cheek swab, which has some DNA there, sent it over to their labs, and they gave me this extensive report, which is why I've made this four part series. Now, before I go any further, this is an exact and momentous occasion, an opportunity right now to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Please do click the subscribe button, post notification bell if you can, so you don't miss part four, which is the finale of this series. And today's one is very special to me, it's one I am looking forward to the most because it is about my fitness report. And as you know through my Instagram videos, my YouTube videos, even the What Comes to Mind season, which I did uh, middle of last year, I'm very eager and interested to be a lot fitter, a lot stronger, a lot faster, a lot more agile. Um, I love watching sports, I love playing sports, I love training and seeing how far my body can go and also looking after it so I don't have or minimize potential problems in terms of diseases or conditions. Now in terms of a little pre-context before I start sharing the report, there isn't much to talk about compared to the other videos because apart from me playing a lot of sports when I was young, I didn't really have something that I, was, I excelled in. I wasn't incredibly fast, um, I wasn't super powerful generally. Um, the one thing that I do think I had maybe an advantage out of everything was stamina, essentially that I could keep playing at an intense period for quite a long time and even now which is good but I'm interested to see what this report shows me in terms of my genetic analysis towards muscle mass, certain risks to actual um, sports injuries, um, my strength response, my endurance response, all those type of things. So I'm going to start now, I'll show you the quick summary as I've done with the other videos so as you can see here this is the kind of rundown or essentially the breakdown of what this report is about um my optimal training time which is obviously fascinating to see um my power endurance stress response aerobic trainability so i think that's to do with my vo2 max capabilities you don't know what vo2 max is so you can see a little description on the screen now something i've never done in terms of test but i'm hoping to do so towards the end of the year so trying to get as fit as possible and see what my VO2 max could be. Recovery efficiency, so um, this is quite interesting. Suffer by injuries and then to finish off with, which is a nice point to finish off with, my muscle mass capabilities essentially. So like I've done with part one and part two, if you're interested to see just the results, they are on the screen now. Um, not as many as uh, the previous video, so hopefully this video shouldn't be as long. But as you can see there, those are my essential uh, results. Interesting to see the ACL risk and increased muscle mass, but um, somewhere around recovery efficiency. So I take longer to recover, interestingly. And that is my um, optimum training kind of response. So low power, unfortunately, strength and endurance at a medium level. But if you so if you are interested in just the results, I'll put it back there again have a look screenshot if you want to but interested in what the results actually mean and what genes were looked at we shall now go further and we will start with optimal training type so optimal training type let's have a look so according to the genetic analysis that should be the breakdown of how i should be training for the majority of the time and so this is mentioned here we recommend 80 percent of your training schedule to be focused on endurance and strength and the rest should be focused on power now when i go through the rest of the video you'll see why that was slightly disheartening but i'm not surprised uh, because based on how i've been in terms of going to the gym keeping fit playing sports it mirrors what this is actually showing so if somebody were to ask me just guess what you are and I didn't know this, I would actually guess something along the lines of this. Not as focused on the endurance side potentially and the strength side, 
but generally saying that I'm probably not as powerful, you know, in terms of fast twitch muscle fibers, being explosive during sports or something like that. Something I would like to be, but maybe my genes are not designed for it. It doesn't mean that I can't be, it's just that I'm maybe more designed and, and suited for other things. So that's a little bit of a um, crash course in my training type. Again, as ever, which I really like about these um, reports, a little bit of training modes of what I could do. Um, so like things like, you know, acceleration, jumping, throwing, it's things that I don't train much, which is a good thing in terms of me not being good, uh, as good in terms of power, but that's something I genuinely do want to look into. Um, so if you, guys, if you end up doing take the test and you have the opposite, let me know because I'll be fascinated to see put into your brain and obviously if you allow me to compared to mine but moving on to my actual power response and the breakdown from that and again a little bit of a caveat for those um may not be well versed but i'm not either uh, that this looks in it looks into the whole notion of acceleration jumping throwing that explosive capability that short quick high intensity response um kind of that pilometrics is keen into this um, high intensity training. Um, somebody, for those who watch football, uh, a winger from Wolves in the Premier League, name is Adama Traore. I'll put his picture here. He is just incredible in terms of being so powerful. Like his speed, his agility, all of the quick movements. And he doesn't actually train weights, but he does excessive amount of training, focus on power. Um, so it's interesting to see, he's like a classic example of, here's a picture of when he was young and now here's a picture of how he is now and he's fascinated sports scientists around the world as to how quick he's been, how agile he's been just through essentially kind of power focused um, exercises. So let's go into the actual um, results. Unfortunately as you can see I have a low capacity for power in terms of fitness and the interesting thing is, as you see over here, something they're known as the sprint gene is this ACT and 3. And some people potentially have a higher or profound effect of having the sprint gene. Unfortunately, some people don't. And, and power athletes have this kind of muscle fiber in abundance, or they're more readily able to develop it further. So. According to this, unfortunately, you may not be genetically suited for certain high power exercises. But I've been waiting for this report to come because I've been waiting to do a 2021 roadmap of my fitness goals and capabilities and things I'm going to do. And part of that is to see how far I can push my power capabilities, even though I'm not genetically designed to do so. So if you're interested in that, do let me know about what you want to see. Because I might do a dedicated video about, I'm not genetically suited to this. But how can I use my environment and something known as epigenetics to change my capabilities over time and to see if I can become more power focused? So I'm very interested in that. But yeah, that is my um, power response. And as ever, things that I could do in terms of resistance, explosive training, short and interval and sprints to try and improve my power um, output. So power response, interesting. It's a shame to start off with a downer, but let's see how we progress in, in this video. Um, endurance response. So, again, as the word plays out, not just technical proficiency, as I mentioned here, but mental toughness, um, cardiovascular aerobic capabilities, using my muscular systems over a long period of time. That's the key part of, of endurance. Um, can I withstand a certain amount of stress long term physically? Um, uh, so how, how much can I essentially suffer um, physically uh, and continue to playing or training or something like that. So not bad that I have a medium endurance response. So I'm not like Mo Farah or Rafa Nadal or Novak Djokovic in terms of endurance, but I've got a decent amount. And funny enough, um, us as humans, we have a unique adaptation for endurance performance, something I didn't know about, as you can see in this little nugget, the did you know section. And hey, here's a list of genes um, that are related to endurance. And funny enough, again, I mentioned in, I think it's part one, about this ACE gene. And actually these NRF2 genes are linked to inflammation in some capacity. 
And my PhD student actually is looking into NRF2 in response to elderberry affecting uh, vasodilation. So it's phenomenal to see the breadth of what these genes can do and the information you can gather from them. So the mean and response, and I'm interested to do as part of that 2020 fitness roadmap, see what I can develop in terms of how much can I enjoy essentially. And I will definitely put myself through some intense training uh, to see how far can I go. Okay, I'm fascinated with it and I'm now, I'm going to the point where now I'm not using lockdown as an excuse. I need to crack on and, and make an effort and um, this might be the motivation and the kickstarter I need uh, to do so. Again, more of a low intensity but prolonged period. Things about lactate threshold, because um, my uh, PhD student uh, did uh, sports science uh, before he came here and he actually told me a lot about um, potential activation, lactate special, like these terminologies within sports science that were fascinating to me. Um, so it's something I'm going to take into consideration and, and, and have a look. Um, so, so yeah, interesting. Strength response. You get stronger. Can I get stronger? Again, maximum force exerted by a muscle is one of the key definitions uh, to describe strength. Um, and also these, these are the genes that will be associated with my strength potential. And keep this in mind, keep the result in mind towards the end, because we're going to talk about muscle mass. And you come to realise that maybe I am not maximising what I'm truly capable of in terms of, of, of training. So let's show you the results first. You have a genetic likelihood for developing strength and should face a moderate priority. So again, I'm not half Thor, Beyonce or Eddie Hall. But I have a decent amount of stress response, and these are the genes, again, of, of interest. And again, it's similar to the adrenalism itself as fairly strong for my age type. Again, I know a lot of people who are way, way stronger, and they are same age, same build. Uh, so I think, again, I'm not maximizing my capabilities, uh, which I'm hoping to do so, post this. But... Again, some examples of aspects of strength and something I didn't want to share, which again, I learned from this report, that one of the key points of potentially getting injuries that, according to this, ligaments and tendons take um, a little bit longer to grow than actual muscles. I'd say muscle often gets stronger more quickly than ligaments and tendons. So if we, it's obviously naturally we're in the gym and it's, oh, we can actually lift longer, lift, lift more, lift heavier not realizing then our ligaments and tendons are potentially at risk and then we get an injury and then we feel more down and depressed because we can't train and then we lose potential strength or mass so logically it actually doesn't make sense to skip and go too quick uh, because you could be at a deficit for so many weeks so although i've missed um, weight training i don't have any weights at home obviously no access to the gym because of covid is me making an excuse because there are like bodyweight workouts that can increase mass for the time being because I'm not at the capacity where I'm so strong I need extra weight you know um, so it's me being honest in this video and saying that look I can't make any excuses now and this should be a good kind of essentially slap in the face to say that look there's, there's more to you you again famous quote that I mentioned in my thesis is um, even though it's slightly off topic but it is relevant that we all have a potential that far exceeds what our minds can imagine. What we lack is the belief that we have it and the desire to utilise it. And often I've used that quote because it hit me when I was doing a conference back in 2013. But it's actually applicable to my physical side of myself, which is there's more to me. Again, according to this report, which you'll see, that I should, should be uh, maximising more and more of. And who knows what I'm truly capable of physically. So 2021... Stay tuned, I'm about to make some noise. So, aerobic trainability, which seems to be my VO2 max capabilities. Now, a little summary of what VO2 max is, is that there's a maximum point that we reach during exercise where we can no longer use more oxygen. Now, people, depending on their um, kind of, uh, uh, you can say exercise field, um, cyclists, tennis players, Predominantly cyclists have very high VO2 max, so they can work even harder and keep using oxygen at a higher and higher resistance. 
Um, so I'm hoping to potentially do my VO2 max soon, if possible, and then compare it to later, or have a, according to kind of small science, you can roughly calculate an estimate of VO2 max, and then see if I can smash that. Um, but here is all of my results. And some good news, um, funny enough, that I have a raised tendency towards VO2 max, meaning you have a more natural aerobic capability than average person. I should be doing more cross training um, to improve that view to max even further. So again, something which is nice to hear, I guess, that you can export your tendency towards a higher view to max by including both endurance and power activities in your training program. So it's interesting to see that I have a higher raised view to max, but I have a low power response. So interesting to see how does that play out long term in terms of me becoming fitter. And the VO2 max is a really good all-encompassing test to see how, how fit and capable you are. So that's some good news actually, which is nice. And I know from what I've heard, you know, above kind of like 40 and 50 is actually really good for a non-elite athlete. Um, so... 40, 45, if you are into sports science or if you know about it, what would you calculate as my VO2 max? If you want to Google it for me, please do so. I'm around 75 now kg, 185 centimeters. Um, I'm going to take a guess how old I am. I am going to be 28 this year. Um, and if you need any more bunch of information, let me know. And then I could try and calculate what my VO2 max could be. So, so yeah, fun fact, did you think I was only 28 or did you think I was older or younger? Let me know in the comments. But yeah, again, um, this is what I was mentioning about, you can use a simple HR equation, assume that means heart rate, to estimate your current VO2 max. So I've been doing tennis recently and I've it's been recorded my highest heart rate, so maybe I can use that to get into um, my estimated VO2 max. My recovery efficiency. Now, this is interesting because you've seen I have a raised uh, VO2 max. I have, I'm more prone to maybe more strength and endurance, but it'll take me a lot longer to recover, according to this. Meaning that after hard workouts, you recover a lot slowly. Meaning, I'm potentially I ache and pain more. I take longer to get back up to normal. Those DOMS are delayed onset and muscle soreness might be a lot more for me potentially. Um, so it's interesting to see how this plays out in real life when I consistently train. Um, for example, these genes tested here consider how your body responds to inflammation and toxins with intense exercise. And believe it or not, if you did watch the other, other um, part one and two, please do so because in part two, it talks about, I think it's part two, it talks about my um, unfortunate ability to generate toxins more readily than the average person. And this actually links to that because I have a low recovery response, meaning obviously one in, in, in turn, I potentially generate toxins too much that it takes me longer to recover from that side of things. And then physically, clearly, that the inflammation that occurs during inflammation, I unfortunately require more recovery time or more recovery treatment to get back to normal. So although I can endure a sustained period of physical stress, Recovering from it is a whole different ball game, and clearly I'm not, at this moment in time, designed to recover quite quickly. So that wish of being an elite athlete, well and truly, gone, which is alright. So I'll just stick to YouTube videos. What do you think? Should I do that? I think so too. Yeah, so what I do want to mention is, it's interesting the different facets of, of physical capabilities. Because you see that during, during so far this genetic analysis that there's some really good plus points that I have potentially a more aerobic capacity than the average person. But unfortunately, I may take longer to recover if I was to consistently train at high intensities. Um, so it's good to bear. It's good to know this first of all. Is what I'm trying to say, and why I've, I've made these videos about this kit that I've learned so much from it. I hope you have so far as well. It's given me more idea about what I should do. In terms of eating the types of food I should eat, the type of exercise now I should do, and in part four, the finale, my sleeping pattern, time plans, and my ability to cope with stress. So, so yeah. And again, 
Uh, with your low recovery efficiency, we recommend 48 to 72 hours rest before very hard workouts. So something to keep in mind. And again, um, my omega three breeds omega three <laughs> omega three needs were normal um, in the other part one part two analysis. But again, there's something I could make sure I have in good quantities, uh, as well as the my antioxidants because. Um, something to mention before I go to the next part that I have a high requirement for antioxidants because it takes me longer to recover from toxins and clearly from physical inflammation so I think for me personally my antioxidant um, requirement and uptake should be a lot more than it should um, than it is currently now so something to keep in mind yeah something to keep in mind my injury risk so I put this together because there's a summary analysis and there will be um, Achilles, ACL and back injury. So I put the, this together in timestamps um, so you can um, have a look. Uh, and again, yeah, so my injury predisposition, meaning I'm not injury prone generally, which is good. Um, so various genes related to collagen can make some people more predisposed to tendons and ligament based sports injuries, which actually makes sense, which is interesting. Uh, the variations of how you make certain collagen, which is key in those um, tissue types, uh, can be a predisposition for potentially um, sports injuries or developing sports injuries. Sorry, and and as you can see here, nothing too concerning. Um, I would be concerned if I had a raised um, general predisposition because you know they've got the whole low recovery um, capabilities so it's like exercise is not really <laughs> uh, beneficial for me potentially but it's good to know that I'm not as injury prone as I may have thought um, for general um, a general basis and now eccentric training pyelometric training are things that I'm trying to introduce more and more and I should do so just because there's no gym doesn't mean I can't do so and that's a excuse on my part that I'm going to make sure I don't use any longer because I think enough's enough um, for me and I'm hoping this uh, video kind of kickstarts that uh, for me. So yeah, um, normal injury risk. However, what about those particular uh, more high risk categories of injuries? So my Achilles, I have a low risk, which is good. Um, that according, I'm not predisposed to potentially having a Achilles risk which is um, quite dangerous, you know, many unfortunate athletes who have Achilles tendon injury are out for quite a long time. Um, but again, interesting to know that these genes are related to um, looking at Achilles. And funnily enough, if you want a realisation of how intertwined biology is, my PhD on looking at how blood vessels support tumor growth i'll link it in the description below if you want to have a read it's looking at this particular gene which codes for the protein VEGF, which is vascular vascular endothelial growth factor and a is like the prominent isophore mmp is matrix metalloproteinase which is the enzyme that breaks down extracellular matrix so it kind of provides space for the blood vessels to grow those are linked with, in this aspect, um, uh, tendons uh, and Achilles tendon. It's fascinating to think how intertwined biology is. You know, I'm just staggered. I just saw that and my eyes lit up because remember, for four years I was just focused on these type of proteins and that type of research. So whenever I see VEGF in any capacity, I'm like, huh? oh, that's me, that's me. You know, so interesting to see, interesting to see for sure. Again, uh, things to consider for myself in response to Achilles injury. Going forward, ACL. Now, we know ACL, we hear a lot of it in sports, uh, especially football, and people are out for several months, um, if not like nearly a year. I remember a friend of mine um, many, many years ago um, when we used to play football, when, back when we were younger, he was a phenomenal footballer, you know, both feet, fast, agile, powerful, um, could have you know, gone on to great things and he actually had uh, two ACL injuries and he was out for such a long time and it's crazy to think, you know, it's, it's such a small thing that it really got to your knee but 
has a profound impact. And unfortunately, I don't have a high risk. I have a very high risk for ACL injury, which is not good news, of course not. But it gives me more uh, motivation to look after myself and try and minimize that from occurring. So my movement patterns, the way I look after my stability is very key. And pyelometrics, as you see here, is very, very important to help uh, reduce the risk of serious ACL injuries. Again, strength, neuromuscular training. Um, again, you see here, this one meant by stability, single leg stability, very, very important. And try and minimize um, that risk. And these are obviously the genes that have been looked at. So, not good news uh, for, for that. But, again, looking at its, how, its perspective, how you look at things. And this gives me even more motivation um, and, and reason to be more disciplined in looking after my legs, and my stability, my training, to minimize um, this risk. So, interesting. Interesting. Lower back injury. Um, let's see what he actually says. Because uh, I do get lower back injuries from back exercises at the gym, like deadlift um, sometimes. Um, but that might be due to potentially poor form or not adequate warm up. I unfortunately have a high risk of lower back injury. Now, back pain is the leading cause of disability worldwide with 80%, around 80% experiencing lower back pain in their adult life um, do you experience back pain by the way so for those of you are watching let me know in the comments if you do so because i do so i changed this chair as you saw when i started these videos into 2021 these new forms of videos because i was getting actually a lot of back pain i was getting more of a hunchback um, which is not good so again there might be lack of exercises as well which is not not good to know so High risk, again, not great, but again, I look at it as more requirement and motivation to look after myself. You know? um, and again, it's how you how you perceive news, you know. Um, so, interesting to know, interesting to know. Um, again, ways that I can look after myself from that point of view. And now, I believe this is the last one. The last point to, nice point to finish off with, which is my muscle mass predisposition. So obviously research knows that genetics play a key role in how much muscle mass we naturally carry and in response to training. And let's see what we get. Oh, that's some good news. That is some good news. I have an increased predisposition to create muscle mass. So based on your genetic results, you are likely to have an increased lean muscle mass suggesting you may find it easier to build muscle and burn energy. Clearly, I'm not making use of that, even during lockdown, um, which is a fault on my part. But, again, looking at my genetic makeup, I can make use of this or exploit this more in a good way to become fitter, stronger, not get fat, and get lazy, um, and I can burn more energy and feel better, and the endorphin rush and stuff like that. So, I think it's time, like, I got up a notch in terms of my ability to become fitter, stronger, faster, um, and by better all-round amateur athlete. Who knows? Jim Shark, I may be coming to see you. Who knows? Right. I think that is the end of the fitness report. And my kind of conclusions are interesting to know about how I looked up I have certain risks, I have low recovery. And that's something I used to think about. So why does it take me longer to recover than my friend if you're both cheating at the gym? And it's interesting to know the genetic results kind of like back that up to some degree. But good points about, you know, knowing I have a higher VO2 max capability and a higher muscle mass predisposition is good to know. And I want to make sure I make use of that to the best of my ability during this year and many years to come. Which is why now that I've shared this and now that you, um, all the audience who are, who've been watching and following the series, know about my genetic foundation, I'm now going to be releasing in the next few weeks my fitness plan for 2021. Lockdown or not, it doesn't matter. These are my baselines. So I'm going to be doing some baseline testing, like in the local park or on the intense court or track and field, and then see how far I can push myself towards the end of the year. And if you do want to see that video, do subscribe if you can. Leave a like and comment. Comment what you what testing you want me to look at. 
and then I can put that into a video, film myself doing so, to show you what my baseline results are, and then take it one step further. But I hope you enjoy the rest of your Sunday. I hope you benefited from this. If you do so, again, please do let me know in the comments um, so I can make more of these type of videos. But I will now see you on Thursday for the finale, which is going to be looking at my sleep kind of routine and analyses, my chronotype, and then my kind of ability to cope with stress and what I should be doing uh, going forward. But yeah, enjoy the rest of your Sunday, and I shall see you on Thursday. Take care.